dear students in today's lecture we are going to see about cell theory the cell theory was formulated by the findings of shielden and swan their main proposal is related to cell is functioning as a basic unit of any kind of a living tissue so the cell theory was further amended by the points of rudel of virchow the phrase says that cells comes only from pre existing cells so on a nutshell the cell theory has the following points what are the points all living things are composed of one or more cells cell is the basic unit of structure and function of living organisms new cells are always produced from a pre existing cells so these three points are important things of the cell theory the further points are some modern interpretations of the cell theory so these modern interpretations includes cell is the fundamental unit of structure and function of any living organism all known living things are made up of cells any kind of a living things let it be a small single celled prokaryote or a multicellular animal everything is made up of cells only difference is in a prokaryote it is living just as a single cell whereas in the multicellular forms the cells are differentiating and getting into formation of different tissues organ and organ systems the next point cells are the smallest living things anything smaller than its size are not considered as alive or living so the smallest living organisms there in the earth is just a cell okay anything that is lesser than its size are not considered as a living all cells will be coming from pre existing cells by division that is first a cell has been present when that particular cell divides the new cells will be formed energy flow is common for all the cells that is energy flow which includes the metabolism that is the anabolism and catabolism and various biochemical reactions will be always occurring within the cells cells contain hereditary information hereditary information in the form of dna this hereditary information will be passed from one cell to another cell during the cell division process that is a meiosis process all cells are basically same in chemical composition when you analyze the chemical composition of the cells they will be having a same composition some organisms are unicellular whereas others are multicellular so this point i have already told some organisms such as an amoeba which is a protist that is a protozoa or a bacteria are single cellular in nature and unicellular in nature whereas the other living organisms such as an animals are multicellular in nature activity of the organism depends upon the total activity of the independent cells so the functioning whole functioning of the organism is depend upon the total activity of the individual cells that have been present in that organism that is a point that have been again put forth by xavier bichet that is the molecules are forming into macro molecules macro molecules are further converted into cellular structures then it forms into the cell cells are uniting and forming into tissue tissues makes about the organs say for example bone in that case and the bones are forming together into an organ system that is a skeletal system and that forms into the entire organism in the previous lecture example what we have seen is an elephant okay you remember the lecture so uh, individual activities of the cells totally gather together into the functioning of the organism the next points are related with what are the common basic characteristic features that are shared by all the cells or the true cells what are the characteristic features? a set of g which constitutes a blueprint for regulating cellular activity and making new cells will be present in all the cells that is a set of genes these genes may be coded by a dna or rna dna is commonly present in most of the organisms rna will be present in some viruses that serves as a blueprint for various cellular regulating activities second point a limiting plasma membrane that permits controlled exchange of matter and energy with the external world any kind of a living cell 
including a plant cell and animal cell, a protozoa cells, will be having a plasma membrane. Even bacteria and archaea will be having a plasma membrane that limits the cell. That is whatever constituent that have been present inside the plasma membranes are making into the whole structure of the cells. So those constituents are involved there in the exchange of matter and energy with the external world. Here the example of something looking like a cell but it's outside the cell is a virus. Virus is a A cell. They don't found to contain a cytoplasmic membrane. Okay, that will be again discussed in the exception. The last point here for the true characteristic features of the cell is metabolic machinery for sustaining life activities such as a growth, reproduction and repair of parts will be always functioning there in the cells. That is cells will be having a metabolic machinery. What is metabolic machinery? It refers to how the glucose that have been taken inside the cell is completely metabolized from which energy in the form of ATP is obtained and with that ATP, the self-sustaining self-sustaining life activities will be formed there, which includes even the growth and reproduction and repair of the parts that have been wound out. Okay. So these three are the important characteristic features of a, any kind of a true cells. Now we look at into the exceptions of the cell theory. That is, certain organisms may not obey the basic rules that have been stated there in the cell theory. So these organisms, the first one is the viruses. They are considered as a acellular entities. Whereas some people believe that they may be living organism. But they don't exactly match with the conditions that have been given for the living cells. That is, they are not made up of cell membrane. That is, they are not surrounded by a cell membrane. And metabolic machinery for energy production and synthesis of protein. So these two characteristic features were lacking there in the viruses. But they have features of life. Some other features that have been shown there in the cell theory or characteristics of cells may be existing there. One classical point that is they are genetically determined macromolecular organization is there. A genetic or hereditary material in the form of a DNA or RNA are commonly present there in any kind of a viruses. But as per the cell theory points, they are not alive. Why? The two points, that is they are exception to the two points, that is they lack the cell plasma membrane or cell membrane. They don't have a metabolic machinery. They are mainly depend on the metabolic machinery of the host cell. There is also some recent finding which states that viruses were elevated to the fourth domain of the life. What are the other three domains? That includes the bacteria, archaea and eukaryotes. These three are the three domains of the life and the fourth domain is the viruses. And the next one is the first formed cell of the world does not originate from a pre-existing cell. This is a very simple point you can able to understand. Only the subsequent cells are forming from a pre-existing cell whereas the first living cell of the world is not originating from a pre-existing cell. The other point is prions. There is a group of organisms called as a prion which are simply referred as a infectious protein entities that can able to cause some kind of a ailments in the old age. That particular disease is commonly termed as a Alzheimer disease. Here itself, I'll try to explain some points, differences that are existing there in the Alzheimer's disease patients. So the left hand side brain is a normal healthy person's brain. However, if you look at into a Alzheimer person's brain, it is having a lot of shrinkage there. So these are all some differences that have been observed there in the Alzheimer patient's brain. The next one is mitochondria and chloroplasts have their own genetic material and they thus they reproduce independently from the rest of the cell. That is cell is undergoing a reproduction or multiplication, a point it is known for you. However, you need to understand a very important basic point that is related to the mitochondria and chloroplasts. Mitochondria and chloroplasts are again the subcellular structures. However, they are capable of undergoing a independent cell division. These are the structures of the mitochondria as well as the chloroplasts. Here you can be able to see a DNA there. Okay. Here you can be able to see a mitochondrial DNA. Again the chloroplasts you can be able to see a chloroplast DNA. 
so this dna facilitate the independent division of a mitochondria or chloroplast cell compared to the cell division so this is uh, again an exception to the cell theory